If you have your Bibles, open to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. And we're going to read from the verse 18 to 19. And it says, if you do not have your Bible, it's going to be here on the screen. And it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody say a new thing. Tell your neighbor a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Um, the topic of the message this morning will be the blessing of letting go. Somebody say the blessing. Somebody say the blessing of letting go. How can this be when you are losing something, you're actually getting something and you're actually, you're actually benefiting from but in this scripture that we read, God says, forget the, the things of old because I'm going to do a new thing. As you might think that you are losing, God says, I want to give you a new thing. I want to give you something better, something stronger, something that will benefit your life, something that will add to your life and not take from your life. Something that will be a blessing for your whole life and not just a pleasure for a short moment. Something that maybe your old mentality, the beliefs, the things that you used to believe in. God says, if you let go of those things, I'll give you a new thing that will begin to bless your life. Amen? We have to understand life is, is a complex thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's not something that we can figure out not something that we can prepare for and and something that we can like well I'm gonna do everything that I can in my power to avoid you know the the temptations avoid the the trials and the things you know I want to go through life and everything be good well it's not possible just let me break it to you if you feel like you know you're gonna over prepare over study or or take degrees and all these things to be able to avoid the trials of your life let me tell you something it will not happen ask Job and he will tell you no amount of holiness can divert you from having that trial day no amount of holiness can have you escape the day of your trial the day of hardship no amount of holiness there's it's it's life things will come things will go but us trusting in God that he will get us through will help us to accomplish and be able to overcome through that trial no amount of holiness no amount of prayer no amount of fasting that you can do that you can escape the day where God says this is a, a dark hour that you must pass through because if gold must to be gold it needs to pass through the furnace of fire if you are to reach your destiny, to be who God has called you to be, there's a day that God has prepared for you to go through that trial to make you better and not bitter. To make you stronger, to make you wiser, to make you faster and to accomplish the destiny that God has in your life. Amen, church? Somebody say a new thing. Somebody say a new thing. Ask David, and David will tell you that trials are the soil in which a man of faith flourishes. Trials are the soil. It is, it is the ground. If you stand with God, if you walk with God, it is, it is the soil will could get you to your destiny. David knew it. David understood it. And the trials and the hard times that he faced, he knew that with God, he'd come out better and not better. He knew that with God, he'd be able to advance forward and to become the greatest king that Israel ever had. That with God, he was able to become to a person that is a man after God's heart. Your trials are not there to make you bitter, not to destroy you, but to get you closer to God, to accomplish the destiny that God has set in your life. Amen, church? Ask Moses, and Moses will tell you one thing. If you're not willing to let go of the old lifestyle, you will never be ushered into divine destiny that God has for your life. They, many people, they go into relationships, they go into business, they go into careers, they go into jobs, and they're, everybody plans to succeed. And I don't know if you guys seen the, um, the picture of success. Some people's success, they seem like it's, a, it's an arrow that goes from the bottom to the top. Once on the bottom, now we're here, everybody knows that song. But it's not like that. 
Success and, and being to, to get to your destiny, to get to your dream is not as pretty as it seems. I don't know, maybe you've seen that graph. That graph is like we started from the bottom, then we went there, there dropped, and then we slowly got to the top. And that is our life with God. If God were to use you, he first needs to prepare you for that place. But that place is not a place of comfort. Every high place is a slippery place. So that's why God takes you through trials. God takes you through preparation that you can maintain the blessing that it is about to come. How many business owners were once millionaires today are broke and living under the bridge? Because they did not have the lack and they didn't have the necessary training to maintain the blessing that came. How many marriages divorced? Because they didn't have the, the proper training, the proper uh, preparation to maintain the blessing that God was going to give them. How many people had good health but did not know the proper, the, the proper preparation, how to keep that health. And now once they were healthy, became sick. And that blessing begins to turn into something painful, something so sour. Something that you look at it and you can't look at it anymore because once it was a blessing. But now becomes a thorn in your flesh. You know... Um, for Moses, when he lived his life in Egypt, everything was great. You know, he grew up on this mindset, you know, he's going to be the next, you know, Pharaoh. And he's going to be a ruler and everything else like that. And then it came a time where, where he saw his people being betrayed. And he was going through a tough time that we were cast out and begins to run away from Egypt. But God had a plan for him. And God wanted to use him as a great deliverer. But one thing Moses had to do is he had to let go of the lifestyle of Egypt. If you can't let go of certain beliefs, of certain traditions, of certain things in your mind, oh, it used to work like that, God cannot give you a new thing. Many times we put God in the box and we say, God, if you do not answer my prayer this way, it will not work. Imagine this lady that just gave her testimony. Would have said, if I did not enter the prayer line, God will not heal me. And if God wants to do it otherwise, I do not want to take it. Would she be healed today? With many people today, if to put God in the box and said, God, if you do not answer my prayer this way, I do not want it. Funny story, I, I remember um, when Wiseman Harry came here a few years ago and we saw many deliverance, many healings, people healed from cancer, prophecies, amazing things. I come to this one person that has just had so much things going on in the life. And I'm like, you know, you know, how come I didn't see you at the, the, the revival that happened? The person looks at me and said, you know what I don't understand? why they call him wise man i'm like what do you mean why do they call him wise man that just throws me off i didn't go because they called him wise man are you serious you are sick you're broke you have so many things happen in your life and you do not want to take an answer from god because of your traditional thinking and of that the whole time the person was like i don't i don't think the whole wise man is in the bible when was the last time you opened the bible I'll tell you John 3.16. Yeah, I know John 3.16. But when was the last time you opened the Bible? Because wise men is in there. And people begin to write off the things that God is doing now. It's the new thing that God wants to do in their life. They begin to put God in the box and say, God, if you do not do it this way, I do not want it. There's a blessing of letting go. There is a blessing of letting go of your traditional, of, of the old ways that good things used to work. And God says, if you cannot let go of that tradition, that thinking, God cannot do a new thing in your life. And I remember um, even, even uh, our grandma, for example, she turned 80, 80 this, this just passed. Let's just put our hands together for Jesus. I, I have so much, so much respect for our grandma and um i'm amazed how she, she grew up in a strong strong religious background i'm talking about if you had an instrument in your house you would be excommunicated from the church instrument it was very very traditional very very um very hard for her so coming to america you know she doesn't understand language she doesn't speak english she's not able to do you know to to understand what's going on here but she begins to support the vision of the church she begins to stand behind our pastor and says whatever you're going to do i know god wants to do something new and i'm willing to lay down my tradition i'm willing to lay down my thinking whatever happens i'm willing to lay down because i know the holy spirit wants to do something 
the church begins to start many families begin to split away they don't understand they're like why are you guys doing this but a grandma keeps coming she doesn't understand like she's praying raising her hand says I support you guys God will do something new I don't know what it is I, I might not understand it I might not you know at first I might not like it but I know God will going to do something because of her prayers because of her support we have what we have today her support with our pastor saying her financial support her her love her care to be able to say grandkids I believe in what you do I even though Martin you wear tighter pants than your wife I still believe in you I, I still pray for you you know it's and she every time you know what I, I lead worship sometimes and I'm like sometimes I'm you know we jump we we do th crazy things on you know doing worship and I look at grandma she's raising her hands and I don't know if she's praising God or just saying Borja Spasih if you're rushing you understand that you know I don't understand what she said but she continues to support us in prayer continues to say say God I do not understand God I will not tell you how to move but I know if I let go of the past you can do a new thing in our lives and in our church come on put our hands together for Jesus Christ I came across a few quotes that that really um a few quotes that really kind of uh it made me to understand this if you if you can put up the first one it says the difficulty lies not so much in developing new ideas as in escaping from old ones it's not it's not the greatest difficult and that's not the greatest challenge is to get the new idea it's not that it's to be able to escape from your old stinking thinking it's to be able to escape from that religion that you set yourself, not God, that you set yourself in. And the beliefs of how you were raised and beliefs how you were taught. And if God comes and says, I want to do a new thing in your life and you still hold on to the old way. Say, God, I do not want that new thing. I'm, I'm too caught up and I'm too attached to the old. God wants to move. God wants to bless. God wants to take you to a new level. But can you let go, let go of the old ways? That you were brought up can you let go of the old mindset that the way God moves yeah you know when we started our church you know and the whole thing with anointing water with the whole prayer line with the whole following churches uh in in Africa and in China and North Korea when all those things took place yeah it was different yeah we did not understand it yeah many times it's like well you know this is how it's supposed to work but we knew God wanted to do a new thing so we we said Holy Spirit we trust you lead us Today, how you see how conferences begins to take. Uh, Apostle John Chi coming over this year. Prophet Bushir about to take place. And none of these things would have ever took place if we held on to the traditions of man. If we held on to the old things that used to work some time ago. Second quote, second quote that I really like and it says, It is easy to come up with new ideas. The hard part is letting go of what worked for you two years ago but will soon be out of date. It is easy to come up with new things. The hard part is letting go of the things that worked for you some time ago, which sooner or later becomes out of date. We many times we pray for blessing, but we're not willing to let go of the junk that keeps, hoarding, uh, keeps, keeps hurting us. We pray, God bless me, God bless my relationship, but you keep holding on to the hurt of the past. God says, how can I bless you when you already filled yourself with hate? unforgiveness jealousy how can I bless you with a new job promotion when you can't let go of what your boss and how somebody treated you in your company then how can I bless your marriage when you begin to to think that oh this is the way I was raised this was the way I happened and when God wants to do a new thing in your marriage you can't let go of those certain old habits old things and you God can't God will not shove himself on you, you just got to remember that God is not a dictator God will always be a gentleman. He'll always offer. But if your heart is already full and it's filled with junk, there's no more room for God's new blessings. There is a blessing of letting go. You can, uh, and thank you for putting this up. You can't get filled with God if you don't empty yourself of yourself. You can't get filled with God if you do not empty yourself of yourself. The emptying yourself of yourself is the way things used to work. When we trust and we, we depend on the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit begins to lead us, will begin to guide us, will begin to point us to a new direction. But if you tell Holy Spirit how things used to work and Holy Spirit, if you don't do it this way, I don't know if it's from you. I don't know if it's, you know, if it's the right thing. And that's not how it goes. 
I want you to write down the first point. Letting go opens, uh, letting go opens one's life to receive. Letting go opens one's life to receive. Uh, I looked up a few, um, and it, it, it's in the spiritual, it's a marital, financial, business, whatever. There's a few companies that I want to list you. If you can put up the list. There's about nine companies. There's much more, but there's nine companies that did not want to let go of the old ideas. And sooner or later, somebody with an idea that was developing, the things that were happening now, outdated them. They were bankrupt very fast. Blockbuster, Xerox, Border Books, Blackberry. Yahoo used to be number one leading search engine. Now they can't even keep up with four. They're still good, but it's not as good. Pelleroid, MySpace, everybody, MySpace fans here. I'm sorry for you guys. Uh, Hostess and the entire publishing industry. These are the people that did not want to accept the new thing that is taking place. And sooner or later, they become to be on the side, become to be bankrupt. If you cannot let go of the old lifestyle, God cannot bless you with the new. Many people who come to church, they get saved. And there's one biggest challenge that they have is how to I let go of the past so God can give me new. When they give their life to Jesus Christ, they, they, they keep holding on to the old lifestyle, old friends, old things that, that, that are in the past. And they try to drag it into the new life that Jesus had for them. And they're like, well, things are not working out. Things are just this. But why do you keep dragging your past into the future where your past is supposed to be the past? God wants to bless you with new contacts, new friends. I'm not saying to abandon your friends because one day you'll bring them to Jesus. But they keep bringing the old lifestyle into the present. And God says, I cannot fill you if you are already filled with junk. I cannot give you the new thing if you are holding on to the old. You have to empty yourself of yourself so God can fill you. You have to let go of the pain, the unforgiveness, what was done to you, what people said, what people have done to your life. And you begin to open up yourself and say, God, I empty myself so you can fill me with the new thing that you have for my life. When you, when you look at Moses' life, and Moses could have told you one thing. He said, how can I let go of the life that I only knew? Moses did not know any other life but the Egypt life. How can I let go of a life that I only know? How can I step into the unknown where the, the Egypt life is the only thing I know? Moses can tell you one thing. If you're willing to let go of the life that you once knew, God will begin to usher you into your divine destiny. If Moses did not let go of his old lifestyle, he would never be the greatest deliverer that Israel has ever seen. If you're not willing to let go of maybe some of the things that the way God used to do, or maybe the way you were brought up, the way you were taught, and God wants to do a new thing in your life, God cannot shove his blessings in you until you empty yourself of that. You cannot receive with your fist closed. You cannot receive with your fist closed. If you're holding on to your past, that's not a way to receive from God. A closed fist says, God, I'm okay. The pain from my past is it's, it's still good. I don't want it. If you ask God, God bless me. God, give me health. God, give me marriage. God, God give me, you know, a business idea. God, give me, you know, a breakthrough in my home group. And if you keep your fist closed, God cannot, cannot bless you. Maybe some leader said something. Maybe some pastor said something. Maybe somebody abused you. Maybe somebody did something to you. If you can't let go, if you cannot surrender, say, God, whatever happened, happened. I'm willing. I'm emptying myself of myself so you can fill me. I remember um, I lived in Nigeria for about three years uh, in one ministry. And then I really had hopes and dreams and, and beliefs that I would make it there and I would become, you know, somebody great. God had different plans for my life. And um, as I came here to America, I used to visit America once a year or so to come back. And every time I would come back, I feel like, man, this place, this church is not for me. You know, I'm going to be there. My life is there. And it came to a point at one time where I was, I was there and my, my, my journey there was finished. And I came here. And as I was here for about six to eight months, I was, I was a nobody. I was back there doing switch nobody even knew that I existed in the service kind of like laying low and I held on 
to my experience in Nigeria I held on to that life there and I always dream I said God you know there's that life there that I have I'm gonna be great I believe and I know these things but the Holy Spirit had a different plan for me the mistake that I made it was that I, I, I put God in the box said, God if you don't raise me there I will never be anybody here I put God in the box and said God you know you are in that person one and if, if somebody else speaks to me that's not God I don't want to receive it for six to eight months I was a nobody I live in my with like always thoughts of failure all these things that, that you're not good enough you're never gonna make it, you'll never amount to anything and I, I put Holy Spirit in the box and I said Holy Spirit if you do not move and if you do not raise me there I do I, I don't want it and Holy Spirit slowly begin to break my mindset begin to break my mindset say I want to use you you know that I, God has great plans for you God God wants to pick you up God wants to use you God wants to has great storage in the front for you and, and it took me some time to realize the Holy Spirit forgive me for putting you in the box forgive me to attach you to the old thinking forgive me for 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 saying this is the way that you should move and I told the Holy Spirit use me however you want to for it's the moment I begin to say that Holy Spirit started raising me up. Holy Spirit started increasing my influence. Holy Spirit started blessing me financially. My home group began to expand. Today, today there's so many guys in, 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 a, in a home group that, that you look at their lives. It's a miracle what God has done in life. Today I'm blessed with marriage. Today I'm blessed with business. And all these things would never take place if I held on to the old mindset that God, this is the way you should move. God has a plan for you. God has a destiny for you. God has, a, has so many bright things for your life. But you need to be willing to empty yourself of yourself. You need to be willing to say, God, I do not know the next moment. I do not know of tomorrow. But I stand and I trust in you. And I know that you want to do a new thing in my life. I know that you empower me to accomplish my destiny. I know that you empower my marriage to be a strong marriage. I know you empower my health to be a healthy person. I know you empower my home group to accomplish great things. God, I'm willing to let go of my past so you can give me a brand new future. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Ask Joseph, and Joseph will tell you that God can use betrayal. God can use dry pit. God can use slavery. God can use false accusation to usher you to your throne. Any place that God can use anything. And Joseph, like, imagine if Joseph being kicked out of the comfort and of the, of the, the comfort of his family and being too tossed into to betrayal of his own brothers. How would that make you feel? Where's, where's God then? How is that divine destiny? How is that for stars and the moons being bowed down to you? How is that for you? Then from dry pit, it doesn't even get, get any, from, from betrayal to dry pit, from dry pit to slavery, from, from slavery begins to, seems like elevation is coming and then comes false accusation. And then you even go to lower of the lowest, you go into the prison. But Joseph can stand and testify today that God can use any foolish thing to make his destiny and his purpose to be accomplished in your life. Joseph, if he didn't let go of his brother's betrayal to him, he would never be ushered into the throne. If Joseph did not let go of the dry pit, he would never be the prime minister of, of that nation. If Joseph did not let go of the false accusation, he would never be used by God to bring bread and to rescue that nation in the great time of famine. God wants to use every foolish thing to usher you into your divine destiny. But you have to choose to let go of the pain of the past. You have to choose to let go of the things that hurt you, that snare you down to be ushered into divine destiny that God has for your life. Amen, church. Somebody say the blessing. Somebody say louder. The blessing of letting go. Number two. Trust God in your next moment. Trust God in your next moment. Your next moment is tomorrow. Your next moment is your next hour. Your next moment is your next second. Trust God in your next moment. You know, the, the hardest, the greatest temptation will be to forget and to be able to forget your past life and to walk into the unknown. The temptation will be greater of forgetting your past and walking into the unknown. Because that's the only life you know. That's the only thing that you ever taught. That's the only way that you were raised. That's the only way that you only learned to walk. And the temptation of forgetting in the past will be much greater than to walk into the unknown. 
Something that we don't know. The next second for us is we do not know where God wants to take us. Did, did Joseph ever plan that when he would give bread to his brothers that he was going to face the dry pit? No. Did he ever knew that he was going to be sold into slavery? That from slavery, part of his house, from part of his house to prison, you never know. But he trusted God in his next moment. He trusted God in his next second, next hour, next day. And he know, God, whatever that you take me, I'll be faithful. And I'll be faithful to stand and know that your promises are true. You said in your word that you are my light. You said that in your word that you're always with me. And you'll never forsake me. And in this darkest hour, I know that you'll get me through. And Joseph became the prime minister of that country. You are not God, so stop trying to fix your life. You are not God. Many people are like, there's certain things that are not working out. And they begin to do everything that they can to be able to fix their life. And things are going from worse to worse to worse. Last time you tried fixing your life, it got you to the mess that you're in. Give it to God. Begin to give it to God. Is it, is it relationships? They begin to try to solve and trust God that God will break you through. Begin to humble yourself. Begin to say, God, I, I humble myself. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. If it's in business, begin to humble yourself. Begin to say, God, I'm faithful. I'm going to give. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to tithe. I know that you're going to break me through. If it's your family, if the kids are falling apart or if kids are not serving God, begin to serve God. Begin to walk with God. God said, God, me and my house will serve the Lord. I'm done trying to worry, try to solve my own problems. I know that you're going to bring me through. And there's a, you know, a um, few years ago we had, we had my brother David that's doing camera today that his life is saved. But a few years ago when his life wasn't doing too well, I remember my dad, you know, doing everything that he can to be able to rescue his life. I remember even when he was sharing one time his testimony, I mean, none of us really knew. He said that one time he had to come to a point of, his, of saying, I stopped worrying and I let it go. God, whatever you want to do with it, you do with it. I'm done losing my mind. I'm done being depressed. I'm done, you know, going for days and days and days with no food, of worrying, what's my, what's my son doing? I'm done of letting go. The moment my dad let go of that, that's when my brother's life began to turn around. We believe sometimes we think that, God, this is how it's going to work. God, this is how it's going to solve out. And we're trying to put our, 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 our own ideas and everything in and trying to do it. But the more we try, the worse it gets. That's when you have to let go and you have to trust God in the next moment. Say, God, I do not know where, where, what, what might happen to him. But I'm going to pray and I'm going to stand that everything will work. God, I do not know what's going to happen to my marriage, but I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to stand. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe that, God, you work and you make all things work together for my good. God, I do not know. That there's sickness in my body. There's pain. I did everything that I can to do, but I trust in you that by your stripes I am healed. God, I don't know about my family, how it stands together, but I stand on your promise that me and my house will serve the Lord. And that is the only thing that I can do. The moment you begin to let go, that is when God will be able to do a new thing in your life. Somebody say a new thing. I had, uh, I had one, one person that I was helping out and there was this relationship that, that they were in. I was like, bro, that girl's not for you, please. I'm like, oh, she's so holy. Yes, all of them are. And I'm like, she's going to, they're not, she's not coming to church, not, she's not serving God as well. You know, just careful. That, that relationship will bring you down. Don't go for that. But she's bringing people to church. Yeah, she partied with them last night and she brought them this morning. So that's not the best. You know, it's like, well, no, that, you know, she, she's this. I'm going to let it go, bro. It's, that's not the person for you. And, and the moment that person let go, God began to bring breakthrough. The moment we think the things that hurt us will give us Give us that comfort that begin to, just one more time, we're going to try. We're going to make this work. I believe things are going to work out. That is when we're going to face our greatest failure. The moment we put it in God's hand. The moment we begin to put the things from the past in the past where they belong. That's when God will begin to step in and begin to do a new thing in your life. Amen, church? I remember another story that, not the best story, but I'm going to mention it. I remember um, when I was like 16 or 17 and I was in a relationship and I was so convinced I was going to get married. My God. Thank God. I, you know, I was, but I was so convinced that this, I was going to get married. And I'm just going to, man, bright future. And the relationship was so sour. We would fight. We'd get into, things were just not working out. And I, 
did everything that I could and my, my, my parents came in and said no you have to let it go you have to just go for it it's not your time the thing is just hurting you let it go remember when my, my parents were praying for me I was weeping I was like it's the only life I know I was 16 years old really the only life you know I only lived 16 years and at that time I was so convinced this is, the, this is, this is it a month later passed by as I let it go I look back and I'm like it's good I'm alive I didn't die. Today God blessed me with a marriage. Today God blessed the other person with a great marriage also. And things begin to work when those things that hurt your life, when you let go, when you begin to surrender to God and say, God, I trust you in my next moment. I trust you in my next second. I trust you in my next hour, my next day. God begin to do a new thing in your life. Somebody say, let it go. Somebody say, let it go. I just want to give you a few examples right now just examples from the story of Lot and his wife and what are some things that we can do I'll let it go so um, if you have your Bibles I'm just going to read real fast Genesis 19 17 says this as soon as they had brought them out one of them said flee for your lives do not look back and don't stop anywhere in a plane flee to the mountains or you will be swept away number one write down flee for your life just practical examples. How do we let go of the things from our past, the things that are hurt us, things that flee for your life? God has called us to run from the temptation, not fight it. God has called us to run from the temptation, not fight it. If it's that, you know, if you're not ready to get married and there's a, a relationship that is, that is putting, just block him, just delete him, just as far as he's from the West, just do that. It's, it works. God will begin to bless you. Don't try to solve things that are broken. You're not God. And the moment you take the place of God, you will encounter the greatest failures of your life. Begin to flee from the things. God, God told to Lot and, and his wife and the, and the children said, flee for your life. Run away from it. Put it aside. Put it behind you. If it's your past, put it as far as east from the west from your life. Number two, do not look back. Do not look back. Do not relive in the past. Some people say, well, I, I still want to remember God. Yeah, we only glance in the past to glorify God, but we do not dwell in the past. We only glance in our past to glorify God where God has blessed us, but we do not dwell in the past. How many times I see people giving their life to Jesus and they begin to think back, oh, the days that we parted, the days of relationship, all these things. They begin to think and begin to dwell in the past and sooner or later they repeat the same story that what Lot's wife did. They begin to look on the life they once lived and that one look cost them the whole life. What God put in the past, he said in our purpose, do not look back. There's danger when we begin to dwell in our past. There's danger when we begin to person that we used to be, you know, relationship or maybe uh, certain things that happened in the past and we go back into it and just, you know, try to dwell in it, try to remember the things. That's the biggest trap of Satan. To be able to think back, to begin to dwell in the past. God has called us to glance in the past so we can glorify God but not to dwell in our past. Amen, church? Ask Lot's wife and she'll tell you one thing. Dwelling in your past will cost you your life. Dwelling in your past, looking in your past can cost you your life. For us, our past is a past. God has put as far as he's from the west. We leave it where it belongs and we begin to encounter the future that God has for our life. Amen, church? Number three, do not stay in the plane. Do not stay in the plane. Some people, you know, they, they give their life to Jesus. They, things, things are not working out and they begin to shift to mediocrity. They begin to shift to laziness. They begin to shift to this, you know, I'm just gonna come to church. And that's it nobody bother me I don't want to go to home groups I don't want to do anything I don't want to be part of uh, nursery children's mission nothing I just want to stay in the plane and what happened with Lot is whenever they stayed in the plane they drifted to the side and the destruction began to follow staying in a plane is actually one of the dangerous parts because when you stay in the plane sooner or later temptation will sleep you away you have to go to the next step the next step is this run to the mountains somebody say run to the mountains somebody say louder run to the mountains what is running to the mountains speaks running to the mountains speaks about home groups you being involved in church running to the mountains means sacrifice 
Running to the mountains means commitment. Running to the mountains means humbling yourself and having the will of God have for your life. So people are like, I lost the fire for Jesus and I, you know, I, I, I don't have it anymore. I'm like, sacrifice. Be committed. Begin to work. Begin to humble yourself. Say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. How many times I can tell you, you know, right now, God has blessed me with the, with the wonderful home. How many guys that I that literally laid my life down for them, they almost killed me. Some guys like, don't, don't shout. <laughs> it was you. No. <laughs> um, some people like, man, I'll teach you how to drive, you know. I'm willing to sacrifice to see souls being raised up, souls being saved. Some people like, man, I'll teach you how to drive. These guys didn't know the difference between left and right. I'm like, take a right, signals left. I'm like, Jesus, we're coming, you know. So many guys that are today no, no longer, so many people that I poured my life into, no longer here. But I know one thing, if you want to see great things with God, you have to sacrifice. You have to humble yourself. You have to say, God, I'll do whatever it takes to make this work. When it comes to relationships, if you're not willing to sacrifice, don't expect a great marriage. If you're not willing to sacrifice, put your, your old ideas, the things that once worked, the things that you were going, oh, how I feel. No, it's not how you feel. It's about sacrifice. That's what God has done on the cross. It wasn't like, oh, this, so the, the nation, the, the humanity is dying. What do I feel like doing? No, he laid his life down. Run to the mountains. It's, it's not in the plane. In the plane, you don't need any effort to go. In the mountains, you have to climb. And then mountains, there's sweat, there's blood, there's sacrifice, there's commitment, there's, you know, committing to church, getting plugged in into a home group, dreaming dream of once day, one day you will own your home group. Sacrifices, be able to lay your life down, say, God, whatever you want me to do, I will do not whatever I want, whatever you want me to do, that's what I will do. Flee for your life. Do not look back. Do not stay in the plane and run to the mountain. Somebody say the blessing. Somebody say the blessing of letting go. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ.